All right, let's get started. So the first thing we do is open up MATLAB. So if we go to start and type in MATLAB, you should have your version of MATLAB appear. So I've got MATLAB release 2017A. Uh, you may have a different version, but the instructions that we'll go through today should apply for up-to-date versions. Uh, so we click on that, and it should load uh, MATLAB. I've already got MATLAB installed, so I'll just open it up here. So to run uh, Simscape, we just need to type in the word Simscape, and it'll bring up the Simscape library browser. So depending on the versions that, or license that you have, you may have different uh, uh, kind of sub-libraries that will appear. Uh, so I've just got the Foundation Library, Utilities, Multibody, and Power Systems installed. So to create a Simscape model, we just need to create a new Simulink model and add in a few basic utilities. So the double-clicking on the Utilities uh, sublibrary, we can find that there's a solver configuration, and we'll need that for any uh, Simscape model, uh, uh, sorry, uh, model that we create. Now, there's a subtle difference between a uh, Simulink model and a Simscape model, and that being the Simscape models use physical signals, whereas the uh, Simulink uh, doesn't. So when we talk about physical signals, we're talking about voltages, we're talking about um, uh, forces. Uh, we're not necessarily talking about arbitrary signals that Simulink might use. So we need to have some type of conversion block. Now, the Simulink to Physical Signal Converter allows for us to take a Simulink signal and turn that into a physical signal. So that's going to be good for providing inputs to our physical systems. Now, we can use sensors to measure physical systems and use a uh, physical to Simulink uh, converter block to take that measured output and turn that into a signal which can be displayed via a scope. So if we click on that, we can add it to our... Uh, model. Now that gives us the you know, kind of basic utilities that we need to use. So let's go and create a model. So if we come and browse to the Simscape Foundation library, we'll see that there's a number of uh, blocks that we can open up. So here we're going to look at creating a electrical uh, uh, circuit. So something simple, like just a, an RC circuit. So if we click on electrical, we see that there's these sub-elements uh, of electrical elements, electrical sensors, and electrical sources. So the elements will contain things like your resistors and your capacitors, as well as your ground. Uh, the sensors will contain your um, current and voltage sensors, and your electrical sources will control your voltage or current sources, uh, contain your um, sources. So let's go and add on a, uh, a voltage source. So if we browse, we can find there's a controlled uh, voltage source. So we check that there. And we're going to measure a voltage across a component. So we're going to need a voltage sensor. So if we drag that, that gives us our sensor block. And now we want to create the uh, add in the elements of our uh, circuit. So we're going to add in an electrical reference. So that gives us our ground, uh, and we want to add in a resistor, and we want to add in a capacitor. Now we can rotate a, the symbol of any uh, block uh, by typing in control and uh, R at the same time. So we'll just tidy this up a wee bit and just move some of these components around, and uh, then we'll start to add them together. There we go. So the voltage is going to come out and into the resistor. Resistor goes into the capacitor. Capacitor's uh, negative uh, end is connected to the uh, ground. And there we go. We've got our little RC circuit. And we just need to connect our solve configuration to some point. The voltage uh, source is controlled. So we need a physical signal coming into the input, which we have here. And we can then take in a Simulink signal and provide that as our input. So if we open up the library browser, we can look at our um, input. Uh, so let's say we use a step uh, signal. So here we've got a step. We're going to click and drag that on and connect it together. So there we go. We've defined a uh, 
input to our controlled voltage source. Now we want to measure our, our, say, the voltage across the components. So in this case, let's say we measure the voltage across the capacitor. So we connect the uh, positive terminals. So there we go. And we connect the negative terminal. There we go. So now we can measure the voltage across the capacitor. And the output is going to be a physical signal, which can be converted into a simulink signal uh, using this conversion block. Uh, so now we want to be able to display that. So let's use a scope. So if we click on scope, we can drag that over and then connect the two blocks together. So we now have a complete uh, electrical cir uh, circuit uh, being implemented using Simscape's uh, electrical um, library. Now, uh, if we run this, we'll be able to see what the voltage will do as a function of time uh, given the input. So the input is going to be a unit step of one volt applied at one second. And we have a resistance of one ohm and a capacitance of uh, one uh, micro ohm. So that's going to be quite small and so our rise time is going to be uh, very very short. Now if we change this to a value of say 1 then what we'll have is a rise time of 1 second uh, sorry we'll have a time constant of 1 second and so the steady state response of this circuit should go from 0 to 1 volt um, and it'll get uh, 63 or thereabouts percent of the way uh, within one second. So let's just have a look at what that response looks like. So if I click run and I open up my scope, here we go. So the steady state value is one volt and within one second we hit close to uh, 63 or thereabouts percent uh, of that steady state uh, value. So um, there we go. So what we've been able to do is uh, implement and model a uh, simple electrical uh, circuit using uh, Simscape's uh, fundamental library and uh, illustrate what that response of that uh, system will be. Now let's say we want to create some type of linear model for the system. So what we can do is add in some uh, linear analysis points. So in our input we can right click on the signal and add a linear analysis point and input perturbation and we can add in on the output a linear analysis uh, output measurement and then we can go and click on analysis control design linear analysis and run a step and so what we have here is our step response of the system and it'll be uh, a um, state space model now we can drag that into our workspace and if we return to our workspace we can see what the uh, state space um, state space will be. So that doesn't really give us a lot of information um, so let's have a look at converting that into a transfer function. So if we use the TF uh, function and then substitute into it the uh, linear uh, sys1, what we'll get is our transfer function. So for a first order system we should expect something like 1 over s plus 1 and here we've got uh, 1e raised to the negative 0, uh, 6 s and we know that that's going to tend towards uh, 0 so we can almost say that this uh, s term in the uh, numerator disappears and so then we're left with 1 over s plus 1 which is what we would expect and uh, we would expect ones because we've got the us and uh, the r and the c components being equal to one. So um, one over s plus one is exactly what we would get uh, given these uh, r c values. So there we go. Uh, hopefully that's given you an idea of how to create an electrical circuit using Simscape, how to get the transient response, how to linearize that model, and how to derive a transfer function from that linearized model. So there we go. So I'll wrap that up and thanks for watching.